Saturday Showdown. Gen.G Esports versus D plus Kia. Not a huge fan of it unless Showmaker has something interesting uh, in the works, as that is a LeBlanc. So a bit of a switch over. This is a champion that's been banned a heck of a lot. Uh, oftentimes, it's the AD LeBlanc that doesn't make us all that excited. They were looking at the Nocturne here. Sejuani makes sense in just providing that front line. <laughs> the Sylvie move! He is a known Wukong one trick. Nongshim, classic team fight scaling composition. We'll see how it works for them as we jump onto the rift for game number one. And I think the indication, not just the Doran string, but the fact we're not seeing Fleet Fort work suggests it is going to be that AP LeBlanc, which I think makes sense in terms of the team's damage profile. And we're going to have a look at this. The Aphelios Milio has been very, very strong. This is why it is dangerous to first pick the Lucian, uh, because this happens. You get it picked into you, and then you lose. And it's a big reason why Nongshim so confidently won that first series. That's the thing with the Lucian Nami. At this point in the game, you can go for some good trades, but you just don't really have the all-in damage. So it's like, poke them down, wait a little bit. If they get low enough, then maybe you can look for something. But chances are, we're just going to see them, you know, going for some good trades, farming up until they get oh. power. Uh, Dundun is just fighting Kingen here, and Kingen's just dead. Um, that's first blood to Dundun. Um, I really want to see the context of how that happened. I only have question mark pings in my brain. Yeah. Oh, we are going to see that play in the top lane. Yeah, let's see it. So he misses Q1, misses Q2, and then doesn't hit sweet spot on Q3 and then dies. That'll do it. Yeah. That will do it. It's that simple. Just don't miss everything. If you secure that early, you're just not going to take damage. Oh, Q also is just shooting Kellen. Um, aiming has to press R to get rid of it as Shattering Strike does deter Sylvie from uh, pressing any further forward. Good positioning. From Lucid defensively, make sure that his bottom lane is safe and he's continuing just to shepherd, shepherding uh, the monkey. I don't know whether that is a thing that can happen. See whether D Plus can get themselves on the right foot when it comes to these team fights, because so much of it is just going to be in Nongshim's hands if they don't fall behind. And right now, absolutely fine. They are just, just cruising. As Shockwave is going to come on through here, Showmaker taking a bit of damage. But it is mainly just a trade as the chain's going to land. There's the flash forward, and Showmaker picks up the solo! So well played, and Kwame had to commit the ultimate just to try and answer the trade. That's how bad things were, but the chain, the flash, to ensure the tether the distance, as soon as that flash came through, a, a pick like LeBlanc definitely won. Well, you can execute. You can see here the really strong trade. Kwame puts the ult in just to kind of answer the trade here, because if he continues getting out traded like this, he's going to be in a really rough spot, but then Showmaker gets to... Oh, never oh. mind. There's Magnus Storm towards the bottom side of the map. Lucid collects two of them. Jiwoo's going to go down. Lucid can tank for days, but it's Kellen that's the one that holds onto it. And now Lucid just continuing to herd uh, Orcs, and it's working out really, really well. It's a double for aiming, and D-plus, they have really started to take off now. I've seen this one before, so we're back to the replay, I guess? Not, uh, it's not going to be a great time. As Peter, he's going to get stunned up. Does have Call Me here though. Man Protect going to be there. Showmaker, he's done this one before. Uh, Jiwoo getting electrocuted. Doesn't like it. Um, not something that we'd expect very many people to like. As, oh my goodness, he just explodes! Wow. Calculated here by Showmaker, and he is 2 and 0 now. Just taking names. Doesn't need any of his friends around. Solo Bolo after Solo Bolo here in this game. Jiwoo was next to his mid tier 1, and that wasn't enough. Uh, well, Peter is going to ult, but that's not going to do anything. Uh, it's another kill for aiming. He's on a killing spree now. They are going to go back and spend a bunch of this oh. money. Is this another one? Is this the third one? Uh, burning, 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 burning. Tick, tick, tick. There is the barrier. So Jiwoo will survive. Had to press the button, is going to press it this time. Jeez. Yeah. Man, this really went from 0 to 100 very, very quickly. Uh, as Yeah, there's another one. That's that's a, that's a killing yeah, spree of solo kills. We can't do, we can't do replays anymore. Um, we'll do a reel. That is on fire, quite literally. Um, we're going to see it again. Um, show me, uh, call me, show me. Uh, and call, call maker um, here towards the bottom side. Uh, it's so obnoxious when you're behind. There's just nowhere safe to really stand as Peter learned very clearly. <laughs> I feel like Showmaker had buttons left over. Yeah, that felt so casual. Yeah. You know, I Just relentless. As it, it is a Cloud Souls game as well. Heck yeah. All it took was getting reverse trapped. By um, okay, Peter is... Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the first assist that yeah. Showmaker has shared with his team. 
But uh, Kingan doesn't look perturbed. He's actually going to hit that Q this time around. Finds the second one as well. And they're oh, oh actually cancelling a bit of the damage there, unfortunately. But he's still following after Call Me. Well, then they're coming on through. Finds that knockup. But there is a Command Protect there. And the rest of T+, oh, no. they're Cancel going to the turn TV. up. Oh, no, Tinden! He didn't expect the entire team to turn up! And there he goes, aiming going to collect that kill. It was all just a cunning ruse here by yeah. D+. Plus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just hoping there's some bug that just left <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. There's another Magnet Storm to come through here. It's Call Me. Oh, my goodness. Three-man stun. Pretty nice there by Lucid. Not a whole lot of follow-up here, though. It's... Oh, I never mind. I may tell a lie. As Shremaker does take a lot of damage. That is Red and White Guns available here as Kellen is going to get pulled back. There's some fish food on the floor. And Jiwoo picks up his first King and also these Chakrams starting to build up. But unable to take down King and but now with a Rift Herald they are going to be able to take their second turret of the game. And Nongshim are not out of it just yet. They'll get another crash. The monkey going to ride Shelly into this one as well. You can't fully disrespect them. You can't completely uh, ignore this Aphelios. You have to deal with it. Oh. It looks oh. like he got a jump scare there, Yeah, honestly, which is, I think we've all had that moment. Oh, um, Shremaker could be in trouble here. Uh, Sylvie just needs another auto. That is 900 gold. And Baron being considered, although Nongshim, he can't drop the ball, though. You have to really keep that pressure up. Is aiming. Oh, no. Uh, he'll find Dindin, and I have a feeling Dindin may die. Um, this is, yep, and it occurred. Am I a prophet, or was it just obvious? All right, well, Shomika sees the teleport coming in, knows that this Baron has been started, and Lucid and Aiming are going to book it towards the Baron now. Shomika turns up. They know that they're on the clock for this one. That is a big tidal wave hitting onto four. The teleport to come in as well as Kingan's looking to show up, and boom goes the dynamite. The Baron is going to go down as well, and it is an absolute disaster. You respect the attempt, oh! but my god, is it a massacre! A yeah. bit of hope, and it very quickly dissipated. It was very dash. The Nexus turret number two going to go down. The Nexus two follow. D plus managing to make the Lucian Nami work into the Melio. Yeah, there's a few kills towards the end. Peter goes uh, gray screen just for a moment, but only for a moment because the game is now over. D plus with game one in the series. The AP LeBlanc is I will kill. Yeah. Uh, and that, that worked out a whole lot better. And especially when they got fed, it, it came to the point where there just was too much damage. That would be funny. Um, Kellen might just be messing around here, though, as Cassidy will be locked in. Okay, yeah, Shomek is back. He's back, everyone. I don't know whether this is for better or for worse, but this is, uh, this is a very classic pick. Uh, if you're a T1 fan thinking back a few years ago, uh, at the hands of Showmaker's Cassidy was how they sort of managed to tidy things up in the summer final. Oh man, still very similar looking draft, just upgraded with the Melio towards the bottom side. Nongshim Red Force, a lot more scaling power as well. Let's jump into game two. We'll see what build ends up going here. It's likely going to be that early tier into the uh, rower though. Obviously that yep. extra level and that health really makes a lot of difference. And we'll see whether Colmy can play aggressively enough to keep him down in lane. One of those things with the Cassidy is he's a ticking time bomb more than anything else. Yeah. It does mean that if we get a similar point, it's like the last game where there was that early Lee, oh no. Oh, dearie me. It's a level two Cassidy. Surely, surely they can't make this work. Well, in comes Lucid. Let's see what they can actually get done here. As he does get a little bit of a crash down, finds the stun. There's the flash. There's the flash forward. And that is Showmaker picking up first blood. Oh, dearie me. Seraphine. And working out. It kind of feels a bit like a brick okay. wall, as we're going to see this one yet again. Okay. Yeah, and it was actually really well played, the getting the E onto Call Me just before Lucid came in, and the flash with the W to secure. <laughs> <laughs> no flash. No flash? Oh, man. <laughs> and in English, too. I feel like that adds to the BM of the call out. Yeah. Um, very nicely done there by Showmaker. Deepos have had some hype comms. We heard some at the end of the last game. <laughs> Integrate a lot of English as well. You know, my Korean isn't isn't too sharp, but I can understand a lot of what they're saying. Yeah, no, I understood that uh, some of that as well. well. The sustained uh -huh. advantage should be there for the Seraphine oh, center lane. No. As Lucid, oh dear, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try oh. again. Uh, call me, just puts up a wall and transitions into helping with the Drake. Blake makes yeah. it look like it's just a rotation for Dragon. 
But they and might get challenged on this. Exactly. Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Lucid as in goes Shomek. He has level 6. That should be a dead Sylvie. Yeah, Shomek are going to collect his second. And now he's Rift walking further forward. The Piercing Light, actually a lot of value onto 3 there. Not able to chase them down, but that should give the Drake over to D+, even though Lucid doesn't have very much health. Still, Sylvie will be able to get there. I think uh, maybe Cormie is the one that has a target on his back. That is going to be the case. The rocks will deter him, though. Yeah, good move from Cormie just to avoid that. Uh, going to be a Mountain Soul, which, you know, it's it's definitely fine for D+, but I definitely think if there was a Hex deck, I think the game would really feel rough right now. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to hold this thought. Yeah, Cormie might be dead. There is a Flash Shattering Strike, and Amy getting a fair bit of damage down. That is going to be that. And yep. Colmy is just being targeted, not having a very fun time. Not having a good time at all. Uh, whoa. I've seen this movie before. He closes the gap. Colmy down to 50% already. Another Rift Walk. Hasn't been stacked up too far as Lucid down to 50%. Fair bit of value here as he does crash away. But now he has to walk with those pants that are very heavy. Still gets to the turret. He should be all right. As we know. Blast going his way over and King and also looking for that flank angle. Both top laners There's trying to find their way in as in comes Call Me. That's a Weaver's Wall just to close the gap though. It's not going to break up the team fight or anything like that, but Lucid's going down very, very low. He could still secure this Drake, but I don't know how much more he's going to be doing, and they do decide to back away. There's the ult, he flashes in! They do find the Drake, but can Nongshim get anything more as Kingen gets into the back line once again? Lucid's still alive, and Showmaker is just destroying them! Jiwoo's in trouble, there's the flash forward! As they lock that one down, it's a double here, as Showmaker will just wipe the floor with them now. That is what Cassidy does, and he's teleporting straight into the top lane. Onto, uh, onto Lucid, that could have been Everyone Ilua. caught in that Magna Storm. That <laughs> it's just... That was fair. Yeah, this is classic having fun showmaker, and we've missed him. Actually, he's halfway to level 15, sorry. Oh, this is And cute. he has to free level up soon. Uh, okay, Nature's Grasp to come forward. There's Call Me as well. They're looking for a target. Let's King is wrapping around, though. Lucid just... It feels like he's immortal. Finally, he will go down. But is it actually going to mean good things for Nongshim? They trade one for one. Sylvie survives. That's probably best case scenario. They're on the board. They got the kill. You know, Staff of Flowing Water and the uh, the Moonstone will be feeling like he can also uh, heal the rest of his team. Is aiming. Oh. Does find you. There's a flash forward. And oh my goodness, that is your wife, Lucian. My gosh, that was a lot of damage. Uh, Sylvie has to flash away. That's a troubled marriage. <laughs> that is a troubled marriage. Well, I think that's a pretty good. I think that's a good call. I think that's a wise decision to go for. I think Nongshim may say, "Enjoy your Baron. We're not going to be able to do anything about that." That is precisely what well, they're going a, to do. There's a dragon up. They could pretend that they can do that. Uh, but Showmaker's coming. Oh no! Call me just dead. He is uh, very dead. Here is the demonstration of the level 16 that Showmaker does have. Playing with his food a little bit here, and does just take him down with yep. the final rift walk. Yep. That one's well and truly stacked up. Get destroyed. Then then gonna get pulled back. And the nature's grasp does nothing really to stop them. As there's the flash magnet storm. Oh my goodness, call me! Just erupts. It's a double kill so far for Showmaker. And now he gets oh. into that back line. Make it a triple. Make it a quadra. And here is the penta kill for Showmaker. The first week it's aiming getting one. Second week it's Showmaker and D plus. They are, yeah, they may have dropped the ball a bit against KT, but they look like dynamite here today against Nongshim. That was not even close. I think both Lucid and Showmaker had a really good game. Lucid with the setup, Showmaker with the dunk. Um, but I think he'll probably be Showmaker winning it again. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the POG interview translation, and we are here joined by Showmaker and Lucid on the side of the Plus Kia. Congratulations. A clean 2-0 win up against Nongshim Red Force. Showmaker, how do you feel? Well, in the previous match, Nongshim actually showcased a really good potential and performance. I was a little bit worried about the match today, but I'm happy that we were able to get a win. And listen, congratulations on your first LCK POG. How do you feel? This is my first POG in LCK. It feels amazing, and yeah, I was pretty surprised. I want to go all the way back to the first game. Showmaker, you were just 
making shows everywhere on the rift. Let's take a look at this replay together. You had three solo kills in that single game. You took down mid laner, AD carry, and also a support. How would you like to rate your performance today? I can't really rate it, you know, with numbers, but it went pretty well. I got pretty fed early, so I was pretty. I was also playing a decent game. Pretty satisfied, I can say. Another solo kill, and then the third one. How do you like your play? I mean, I don't think that was like a crazy outplay, you know? It's just I got fed, so I was lending my skills and got the kills. And Showmaker. Lucid, even though he's a rookie player in the LCK, he's been uh, displaying a great performance and the synergy between you two is pretty good already. Yeah, he's really smart and he's really competitive, you know, so that's how he's kind of stepping up every time. He's always willing to play better. He's doing a great job already. Are you guys close with each other? Or are you guys kind of awkward? Yeah, we're close, we're close. What about you, Lucid? I feel like I'm living in my dreams, you know? Because I have a very talented mid laner next to me, so it cannot be more reliable than this. In game two, we were able to see Sena, Seraphine, and Talia comp on the side of Nongshim. I was like, yeah, I guess they prepared something, you know, unexpected. But... <laughs> so I was like, yeah, we gotta play well into that. And the answer from the plus Kia was R5 Kasadin. Tell us more about it. Sena and Seraphine. We're already picked in the LEC, and usually they have to pair them with a uh, damage carry uh, on the side on the mid lane. But Talia was not the right pick for them, so I was like, maybe I can just play Kasadin into their comp. And then with that Kasadin, you are able to get a pentakill today. I think this is like my fourth pentakill in the LCK, as far as I remember correctly. I think that's a lot considering that I'm a mid laner, so I'm pretty happy with that, and I hope I can get more in the future. But it was you, Lucid, who was camping in the mid lane to get the Kasadin fed early. What was your kind of plan for that game? In order to make sure that our Kasadin can get fed, I was trying to get a good control of the vision, checking where the enemies were placing wards, and as long as I can give him one or two kills early, I knew that he was going to carry the game, so I think it went pretty well as we planned. <laughs> And Lucid, he played well for both games today. Are you the one making proactive calls in game, or do you mostly just follow the calls from your teammates? Um, usually, my teammates kind of share their opinion with me, and then I usually just follow them. Is that true, Showmaker? Yes, absolutely. And next match, Showmaker, is a big one. We're having the first ever Showmaker versus Kenya matchup in the LCK. Any message over to Kenyan? I'm coming to kill you, Kenyan. What about you, Lucid? You're going up against Kenyan in the jungle. What is your mindset for that matchup? I have always respected him ever since I played in CL, and it's my honor to be able to actually face off him. So I hope I can have a great match together with him. And this will be the end of the interview from Diplus Kia's POG, and back to the space. Thank you.